guys welcome back to vlogmas it is the second to last day of vlogmas i can't believe it i feel like it has flown by today i thought it would be fun to try a no brand tutorial so i'm going to be doing a full face of makeup and talking you through the techniques but i'm not going to be mentioning any of the brands or products that i'm using i know this video idea was going around on youtube a few years ago i'm not sure who started this idea if anyone does know let me know but i did see my friend too much tosh do a video like this a couple of months ago and i thought it was such a fun idea because we're really going to be focusing on the makeup, the application, the techniques, as opposed to the products and brands. So you could recreate this look using similar products that you have. So I'm going to be describing the products I'm using, but not what they are. But I'd love to hear your guesses in the comments what products I'm using. And this look is actually sort of like a trial run for a holiday party that I'm going to really soon. And I wanted to sort of brainstorm like what kind of look I'm going to wear. So let's get started so for starters i'm going in with a hydrating and gripping primer because the foundation i'm going to be wearing is pretty matte so i want to have a nice hydrated smooth base underneath i actually just this morning shaved my face for the first time in months i used like one of the little like single blade razors but whenever i do that it makes such a difference in how my makeup goes on i feel like my makeup like looks so much smoother but I don't have all that peach fuzz on my face. I'm actually gonna be doing my brows a little bit differently. I'm using a brow glue and I find that this works best when I apply it before any other base products. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this. So I'm just brushing my brows upward and then I'm taking this flat brow tool and just pressing those hairs down. I don't want them sticking straight up, but I do want a little bit of lift. And this is a very sticky brow glue. It really does glue the brows down. This brow is a little tricky. All right, so the brows are glued. Next, I'm taking a full coverage foundation. I do want to actually try mixing this with a little bit of a concealer that has a bit more of a neutral finish to try and get my perfect shade match. So this is like a pretty lightweight concealer, so I'm thinking it shouldn't look too cakey on my skin. Mixing that together on the back of my hand and then going in. Would love if these breakouts would clear up before the party, just saying. Then I'm just going to pat that in with my damp beauty sponge making sure not to forget like this area like all the way out to the ears and of course down the neck as well taking a little more of the foundation over these breakouts Next, I'm taking some more of that same concealer that I mixed with the foundation, and I am going to conceal my under eyes. I like to let my concealer sit for like a minute or two before I blend it out, because I've heard that that helps increase the coverage a little bit. So that's been sitting probably for a minute now. Now I am just going to tap that in. This isn't the highest coverage concealer ever, but it has really good coverage and I like it because this is just the concealer I have that looks the best overall <laughs> like I feel like this one is the least likely to get dry and crepey and cakey so really just tapping that in with my brush I find that tapping as opposed to like sweeping the brush helps maintain the most coverage then I am going to take some color corrector this I've okay this is a trick I've started doing where I really just tap the color corrector in the hollows of my under eyes. So I'm not taking it all the way to my lash line. I like to keep as little product in the like lower lash line area as possible because that's where I have the most fine lines. So if I pile on too much product there, it can really start to settle in those lines. So I'm really just tapping this in this inner corner and then this line where my under eye meets the rest of my face. I 
that really does make a big difference. I'm actually not going to be wearing any cream cheek products today, so I'm going to go ahead and powder my face. I'm using a translucent loose powder on this sort of dense tapered brush to set the under eyes, making sure to look up so that all my lines are flattened out before I set everything. Then on the rest of my face, on a pretty dense, large kabuki brush, I'm going to set with a pressed powder. And I am setting all over the face just so that I have the smoothest possible canvas for my cheek products. It's so hard not to show the products, but next I'm going to go in with bronzer, and I picked a matte and pretty light toned bronzer. Got it pretty evenly on my brush, and now I'm just going to first kind of taking that in the hollows of the cheeks and then up around my temples and my hairline, just warming up the perimeter of my face. And I'm also blending that onto the jawline and down the neck, just kind of taking whatever might be remaining on my brush. So I chose a cool toned, really soft baby pink blush, and I picked that up on this tapered pointed brush. I really like this for blush. And just really tapping that on the cheeks. I don't want too much. I'm really being careful. I know I have a tendency to go a little heavy handed with blush, and sometimes I like that look, but I want, I want just a soft, fresh, wintry look here. So I'm not going too crazy, mostly focusing this on the outer part of my cheek and even like my cheekbone here. Then on my favorite highlighter brush, I'm picking up some of just a really soft, slightly pink champagne highlighter and going in really lightly with that. I don't want too much. Yeah, I think that complements that blush really nicely. I mainly like to swirl my brush pretty much in line with the outer corner of my eye. That's where I want most of the product to go. I just do these pretty big circular sweeping motions. Some of it does end up like on the top of my cheekbone, but I don't want to have any too far in to where you can see it when you're looking straight at my face. I actually think I might have gone a little bit too far in on this side. I'm going to take a little bit more of my pressed powder and just tap over this part because I really I don't like when my highlighter is visible when you're looking straight at me I don't want it to come in too far towards my nose because that's where I have the most apparent pores on my face and I feel like it just doesn't it's usually just not a good look to have highlighter over there so I like to really focus it out here I feel like that really helps lift my face next I'm taking just a really small dab of it's actually more than I meant to get, of uh, eyeshadow primer. I might tap a little bit off on the back of my hand because I don't really need that much. Now I'm tapping all over my lid and all the way up to my brow bone. I do want to fill in my brows a little bit. I'm going to use a brow pen. I do feel like this is the easiest way to get really natural looking hair-like strokes. Whenever I do my brows like this where I do the brow glue first, I really like to fill in my brows as little as possible, so I'm really just focusing this kind of in the tail of my brow where I have some kind of sparse areas. It's kind of hard not to show the product right now. And I'm filling in just a little bit up here in the front as well, really lightly. I always kind of try to match the shape of this brow to the shape of this brow because this brow, I like the, sh the shape of it better. <laughs> like it just naturally has more of a structure to it. So I'm kind of trying to like mirror this side to the other side. I would say that is pretty good. I think I'm going to dip into a few different palettes for this eye look, but I'm starting out on a, I would say medium sized crease brush with a light gray matte shade. Just laying the foundation here in the crease. 
Then on that same brush, I am going into a different palette now, and I'm picking up a little bit of a rosy beige color, and I'm going to work that into my crease as well. Uh, not sure I love those two shades layered together, but that's okay. I'm actually going to lay down a little bit of a glitter primer on my lids, just a teeny tiny bit, just right here on this blank part of my lids. Then on my lid, I'm going in with this sort of gray and gold duochrome. Tap that over the glitter primer. Then on my pinky, I'm picking up some of this really foiled silver shade. Tapping that first in the inner corner. And then I'm also bringing that in about a third of the way on my lid. I'm taking a bit of this sort of smoky, taupey silver shade, also metallic, and that I'm tapping in my outer third. Then on this really small crease brush, I'm taking some more of that rosy beige matte shade that I put in my crease. Actually now I, I'm, I'm liking those two matte shades in the crease mixed together. At first I wasn't so sure mixing the rosy shade with the gray, but I actually think it totally works with these shimmers. Actually, I just decided I'm gonna mix the rosy and gray matte together on this brush, and I'm smoking that all the way across the lower lash line. I think I want a little more gray than pink. Also connecting that up to the top as well. I am loving this. This, I wasn't sure, like, like I said, this is kind of a test run, so I'm not sure this is exactly what I'm going to wear, but this very well might be exactly what I wear on my eyes. <laughs> like, I love that. Back to my original medium-sized crease brush. Just want to run that through the crease again. I don't mind getting a little sparkle up here. That's totally fine with me. I really just want everything to look blended together. The only thing I would change, I think I would apply that silver to the inner corner with a brush rather than my finger, because I do feel like it's looking a little sloppy. So I'm just going over that with a tiny bit more with my brush and then blending the whole thing. Taking a little bit more of my pressed face powder on a fluffy angled brush and just kind of using that to clean up this outer section. Also the brow bone. I don't want my brow bone to be too cleaned up necessarily. Like I like for the matte shadows to still be visible pretty close to my brow. I think this look does call for a black winged liner, so I'm just taking a black felt tip liner pen. And for the best chance of symmetry, I like to go back and forth. Instead of doing one wing and then the other, I just kind of go back and forth until I'm done. So I've laid down the liner from really about where my pupil is out to the outer corner. And now I'm going to pretty much stamp on a wing with this pen. Definitely out of practice with black liquid liner. I hardly ever wear black liquid liner anymore. So ooh, good thing we're practicing. Yeah, it ended up pretty asymmetrical. Here's what I'll do. I'm going to take an angled liner brush. Actually, this is technically a brow brush, but I use it as a liner brush. I'm just going to pick up a little bit of matte black eyeshadow on this brush, and I'm going to go over the liner. I do feel like the liner, like, I almost want the liner to be a little bit smokier than this. So, also hoping this will just kind of help smooth it out a bit. Okay, I like that much better, actually. Yeah, that was a good idea. But I'm glad I used the liquid liner too, because that's a super intense, like very black liner. So I feel like this way it still looks sharp, but now it's a little bit more smudgy. Finally, I am just going in with some mascara. Thought about doing falsies, but... And I might actually wear falsies to the party itself, but... I just don't really want to do them right now, <laughs> to be honest with you. So I'm just going in with some volumizing mascara. Probably going to do like two or three coats, because I want like a nice dramatic look. All right, going in with coat number two. What be? On the lips, I'm first going to line with a light nude lip pencil. This is 
a color that is pretty close to the color of my natural lips, but just a little bit more brown. And so I'm starting out by connecting both points of my cupid's bow and then just ever so slightly overlining above that. Because my bottom lip is larger than my top lip, I'm not overlining my lower lip. Then I'm going over that with a slightly cooler toned pinky brown nude color. Oh, look who's here. All right, well, obviously I also need to figure out what I'm doing with my hair, but that will come later. Oh, my sweet baby. I was gonna say spray setting spray, but now I have a kitty in my lap. But for the actual party, I will definitely be applying a long wear setting spray on top just to keep everything lasting nicely. But, but I think this is a winner. I might change a few things like on the day of the party, but I really do like how this turned out. I definitely think it looks festive and glam. So I hope you guys enjoyed this no brand tutorial where we focused more on the techniques and the application as opposed to the products. I also feel like this would be a really fun tutorial to follow along with at home if you wanted to find products that fit the same description as what I'm using and see how close of a look you're able to get. But anyway, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you had fun. If you did, be sure to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel, and I will see you tomorrow for the last day of Vlogmas. Bye!